right, ladies. Tim Burton. What have we got? Well, we could do something in his new film, Miss Peregrine. Tom, what is that? It's the Burtonometer. It's designed to work out how Burton is. That's not a word. Movie is. Watch. Right. Okay, next idea. Ten things you see in every Tim Burton movie. Monochrome colour scheme, blonde love interest, Johnny Depp. Guys, the Burtonometer is going crazy. That idea is too obvious. Do we have something a little less obvious? We could do something on Tim Burton's cancelled movie projects. In the immortal words of Dr. Fraser Crane, I'm listening. I think I have the perfect thing. Oh my god. There is no way we are not featuring that. To more thoughts. Me and the Burton on out are in. All right, it's settled. Six cancelled Tim Burton movies that would have been cool as fuck. Jurassic Park. All right, quick history lesson. It's the early 90s and Batman is a monumental success with a box office gross of around half a billion, making a young Tim Burton the hottest property in Hollywood. But just how hot, Ruby Rod? It's hotter than hot. He's hot. hot. Ah! So much so that Warner Brothers wanted him to direct a movie adaptation of Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. Yes, THE Jurassic Park. However, after a fierce bidding war, Universal Studios secured the rights and hit up E.T. director Steven Spielberg, who'd reportedly been interested in the project before the book even had been published. Hipster. The rest obviously is history, and we can only wonder what Tim Burton's Jurassic Park would have looked like. For starters, the dinosaurs would likely all look stringy and sad, and everyone's favourite paleontologist and paleobotanist couple, Sam Neill and Laura Dern, would be out, and Burton, it couple, Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder would likely be in. Maybe it was for the best, actually. Why Burton's FIFA-led Catwoman never hit our screens is your classic sad tale of studio meddling. While Batman Returns was a great success, it didn't quite light up the box office like Batman did, and so Warner Brothers opted for a lighter tone for its follow-up, Batman Forever. As evidenced by this highly accurate reconstruction. But how do we lighten the tone of Batman? Greatest comedy actor of our time, Jim Carrey. Put nipples on the Batsuit. Alright, let's put nipples on the bad suit. Batman Returns screenwriter Daniel Waters even penned a script for Catwoman, which involved Selina Kyle getting amnesia and going to relax in the Vegas-esque Oasisburg. Oh, which just happens to be run by secretly evil superheroes. Sounds weird, but honestly, 8 out of 10 would watch. Sadly though, Batman Forever made more money at the box office than Returns did, and so while that movie was, and let's be real here, absolute trash, Warner Brothers decided to keep milking that amusing cash cow's bat nipples dry, which is why we ended up with the dumpster fire that was Batman and Robin. And this is why we can't have nice things. Meow. To be honest with you, it's difficult to believe that Tim Burton hasn't had anything to do with the Addams Family. Except for stealing their whole aesthetic. In 2010, it was announced that Illumination Entertainment and Universal had acquired the rights to everyone's favourite creepy, kooky, mysterious, spooky, ooky family. They planned on making a kid-friendly stop-motion animation, so who better to bring on board than everyone's favourite creepy, kooky, mysterious, spooky, ooky director? At this stage, Burton had already made The Corpse Bride, produced The Nightmare Before Christmas, and was deep in production on Frankenweenie. So it wouldn't be a far cry to imagine his stop-motion take on The Addams Family. Burton was attached to co-write and co-produce the stop-motion animation feature, until it got co-canned. I'm just kidding, it got completely canned. Tim Burton's Superman Lives is the mother of all cancelled films. 
It would have been unlike any Superman story ever done in comics, movies, or TV before. It would have taken everything we know about the character and turned it upside down. Why are you bringing up such painful memory? I'm still, I've just, last year, finally, you know, recovered shaking. Loosely based on the death of the Superman comic book arc, it explored Superman's feelings of being an outsider. But Burton wanted to completely reinvent the world Superman existed in, pulling it from the bright and hopeful depiction of Dick Donner's movies and plunging him into something closer to Ridley Scott's Alien. But for every good idea, there was an incredibly bad one. Good idea, Brainiac as the villain, destroys Krypton and aims to finish the job by killing Superman. Bad idea. Brainiac would also merge with Lex Luthor to become a new two-headed supervillain called Lexiac. Guys, Lex Luthor, Brainiac, Lexiac. Put it in my movie! Superman Lives was fraught with issues, ranging from multiple script rewrites to overzealous producers pulling the project in strange directions. One, for example, said Superman shouldn't be able to fly or wear his iconic suit, and that there should be a battle with a giant spider. Eventually, when the project had eaten up millions of dollars, it was cancelled, which is a shame because it could have been really something amazing with a little refinement. Oh, and that producer with the giant spider idea? Remember Kenneth Branagh in Wild Wild West? Same guy. Back in 2012, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Warner Brothers were interested in making a live-action adaptation of Pinocchio using a real boy and everything. Burton was attached to direct, and his first choice for the iconic role of Geppetto was Robert Downey Jr. Now, you might not immediately think of Robert Downey Jr. for the role, but honestly, he can get away with anything. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! What? Like the time in Tropic Thunder where he, a white American actor, ends up playing an Australian actor, who in turn plays a black American soldier, who then played a Vietnamese rice farmer? Is this right? You don't know, do you? Sadly, Burton passed on the project to direct Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but the film has finally resurfaced with Da Vinci co-director Ron Howard overseeing Downey Jr.'s Geppetto. Hopefully you can do for woodcarvers what Patrick Swayze did for Sexy Ghost Potters. Goosebumps books were pretty big back in the 90s. Kids would spend their time poring over R.L. Stein's latest book, or sat in front of the goggle box getting second-hand anxiety from all those papers escaping from that briefcase. Maybe that just says a lot about me as a child. In 1998, Burton was attached to produce the live-action adaptation, and everything was pretty much good to go, apart from one tiny little crucial detail. The script. R.L. Stein remarked that they couldn't get a script we liked or decide what book or monster to do, so it just languished. There were 17 or 18 scripts, and I sort of lost track of it entirely because I was busy writing the books. The project eventually came to fruition in 2015, starring Jack Black. Some would say almost 15 years late. Some would say that. Me. I'd say that. So there we are, six of the coolest and kookiest Tim Burton projects that never really made it off the ground. Which would you have loved to have seen made? Don't worry, in some sliding doors parallel universe, that Nicolas Cage Superman movie exists. For more videos like this one, make sure to like and subscribe to GameSpot Universe, and we'll see you next time. Okay, ladies. Now let's get information. <laughs> Whoa, the Burton Homer scale is going crazy. <laughs> Guys, do you want to look at the camera now? <laughs> Guys! <laughs> <laughs> Guys! It's, it's difficult to flip up, you have to probably get underneath the frame and... Tomor! Me and the Burtonometer meter are in. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Why do I keep... The Burtonometer meter! The Burtonometer meter! Oh, Dios mio.